What is up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and these are my favorite metal albums from the month of June. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best damn brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, first up, we have Fear Factory with Aggression Continuum via Nuclear Blast Records. Fear Factory is, of course, the legendary industrial metal band formed back in 1989 and responsible for benchmark albums in the genre such as Demanufacture and Obsolete. Aggression Continuum is the band's 10th studio album following up 2015's Genexus, marking the band's longest gap between albums to date. Well, we're waiting. I really dug what I heard from the singles leading up to this one, but to be honest, I didn't expect it to end up on this list. That said, I really enjoyed it. Almost every track has something to offer from the almost Meshuggah-esque bangers like Disruptor and Collapse, to the synth atmosphere and especially the symphonic string arrangements on tracks like Recode. And goddamn, do I love the clink 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 of the steel percussion bringing those classic industrial vibes as well. Then there's tracks like Cognitive Dissonance, Aggression Continuum, and Manufactured Hope that would have been right at home on Demanufacture or Obsolete with their seemingly infinite breakneck chugs. And of course, Fuel Injected Suicide Machine perfectly illustrates the yin and yang of Fear Factory's crushing verses and choruses that really drift into the stars with sparkling atmosphere. Seriously, the melodic elements here are very strong and much better implemented than they were on Gen X's. If you ask me, this is one of the band's best and at bare minimum in their top four or five. Check out my full review for more thoughts and also my Fear Factory tier list for my take on their entire discography. Then we have Hans Grossman with Two Where the Light Retreats. Hans Grossman is a German drummer, writer, sound engineer, and music producer who has made his name in the likes of legendary bands like Necrophagist, Obscura, Alkaloid, and even Trypticon to name just a few. But during this time he has also kept busy with his own self-titled works with three previous albums already under his belt. Two Where the Light Retreats finds Hans once more at the top of his game with eight incredible monuments of progressive and technical death metal. Across the board, the instrumentation is absolutely dizzying. The Great Designer kicks off like a much heavier, proggier version of Metallica's Blacken starting off on a high note, before being quickly upstaged by the even more impressive Fallujah meets Obscura riffs and soaring guitar harmonies of Sun Eaters. <laughs> Then we transition to the delightfully infectious chugging groove of the symbolic nature of Terms and the thrashy goodness of In Glacier's Eye. And the drums that kick off Dowla Girl? Just spectacular. And speaking of infectious, despite the usual performative gymnastics, this may also be his most accessible work to date, thanks to what feels like an increased focus on great hooks and face-melting solos. Everything feels just a bit more focused and streamlined, but without losing all of the cool stuff I look for from this very multi talented musician. Next, we have Illustrium and a Monument to Silence via Unique Leader Records. Illustrium is a Philadelphia-based progressive death metal band I'd recommend to fans of, like, once again, Necrophagist and also Warforged. The more I listened to this album, the more I wanted to do a full-length review on this one, but unfortunately, without the name recognition, it just makes more sense to get more eyes on them in this format. In any case, picture a fusion of the songwriting of mid-career Opeth with the likes of Obscura and Fallujah. The result is a stunning and and seemingly unending cascade of incredible riffing that, similar to Hans Grossman, never sacrifices catchy melodicism in its reign of impressive technicality. Oh, 
In fact, the mellow death elements on this album are some of the best I've heard in years, calling back to the days in the early 2000s, drooling over the dueling guitars of In Flames and drifting melodies of Dark Tranquility. Additionally, tracks like The Plea also bring comparison to the likes of Between the Buried and Me in their broadened dynamics and songwriting. Admittedly, at over an hour, it's a touch over long, but even so, it's a very impressive outing that you do not want to miss. Then it's Sojourner with Perennial via Napalm Records. Despite being familiar, this was actually my first time sitting down and listening to this New Zealand band. And man, do I feel like I have been missing out. I was already deeply drawn into the windswept, nature-loving black metal atmosphere, folky overtones with the flutes, and ethereal clean singing from new vocalist Lucia on the title track. But then that proggy guitar riff hits around the two minute mark and I fucking melted. <laughs> absolutely stunning. An incredibly dynamic fusion of elements to keep this seven minute epic deeply engaging from start to finish. And that harmonized outro? Take me! The other song here is Relics of the Natural Realm, which is a more subdued piano-driven ballad. Even further showcasing Lucia's vocals kind of like Rivers on the latest Epica album. So yeah, a short release but one so stunning that it still earns a spot on this list and makes me excited to dig into the Sojourner back catalog as soon as I get a chance. When Whatever that is. Next up, it's Wanderer with Liberation from a Brutalist Existence. Wanderer is a Minneapolis, Minnesota bass band driven by a caustic blend of grind and hardcore, and drawing influences from bands like Converge, Trap Them, and Baptists. Every song on this very concise 24 minute album is a banger. From the jangly Kurt Ballard riffs of Marionette and Abrasion, to the rumbling bass and 90s noise rock elements of Decay and Hellhole. Imposing death growls collide with rollicking D-beats for high-energy odes to escapism, self-reflection, the concept of beauty, and existential trauma. It's violent, it's abrasive, and holy shit, is it a good time. The whole thing is great, but honestly, you had me at Converge and Trap Them. Then it's War Moon Lord with Battle Spells via Werewolf. War Moon Lord is a Finnish black metal band featuring Lord Rage Tour, also of Old Sorcery. Combining the icy yet melodic riffs and synths of Vindir and Sacramentum with pagan atmosphere and even some additional folk instrumentation, Battle Spells feels like a fantastical journey back in time to knights, wizards, and orcs. I tend to immediately lose interest in albums these days that imitate the old classic sound, but every now and then a a band like War Moon Lord comes around and rekindles the magic that made me fall in love with this genre to begin with. They have taken all the best elements that I've heard 10,000 times before and take them to the absolute pinnacle of what is possible. The result is seven epic anthems of varied direction from the scorching war charge of Empowered with Battle Spells, to the almost Ensephirum-esque chanting and acoustic of the Key of the Moon Pure, to the blistering blizzard of Purging Nefarious Vortex. All great titles, by the way. Thank you, War Moon Lord, for delivering one of the few traditional black metal albums this year that really captured my imagination. Then it's Noctambulist with the Baron Form via Willowtip Records. So I'm cheating a little bit again with this one as it technically comes out July 2nd, but that's this Friday, so why wait an entire month to get the word out on this must-listen album? Noctambulist is a Colorado band deeply influenced by the sound of Ulcerate. In fact, we did an entire podcast together talking about this after they blew me away with the 2019 debut Atmospheres of Desolation. And we also talked about our shared love of Twin Peaks. Go figure. Ah! The Baron Form finds them continuing along with that same framework while also forging their own identity within the niche. It's a bleak, barren landscape, seemingly devoid of any sense of hope or solace. Alive, 
driven by impressively textured drumming, songs traverse between chaotic blasts of madness and more subdued but equally ominous bouts of post-metal. In this way, I'd compare the sound to a flame, cycling between wisps of choking black smoke and complete destructive blaze. But with an increase in the raspier vocals, I'd also call this a more blackened outing than its predecessor, combining elements of that album with other influences like Deathspell Omega or Blutaus Nord. There's even some ambient elements, namely during the final third of the 11 plus minute infinitesimal, which ends with a particularly unsettling section reminiscent of the first Quake soundtrack. Trust me, these guys deserve your attention. Next up, it's White Ward with Deba Mermorty via Deborah Mermorty. White Ward is an Odessa, Ukraine progressive post-black band for fans of Numenorian, Isan, Retch, and known for their incorporation of saxophone into highly dynamic and often lengthy compositions. This EP follows 2019's Love Exchange Failure, which, while a little less focused than 2017's critically lauded Futility Report, was still another massive statement from the band in terms of their willingness to experiment and unwillingness to conform to any particular preconception of what they should sound like. You can't tell me what to do. Deborah Mermorty, which translates roughly to We Are Death, finds White Ward returning to many of the elements that I found so engaging to begin with. Namely, once more incorporating treacherous volleys of harsh and aggressive black metal to further punctuate the almost unsettlingly serene post-metal and jazz sections. In fact, I'd argue that this EP finds the band reaching higher razor-sharp peaks than ever before in terms of sheer heaviness. There are moments on this album that rival classic albums from Mayhem and Dark Throne in their darkness. But much like Panopticon last month, they always manage to offset this perfectly with the more melodic elements, just trading strings for the equally soaring saxophone. This EP may only consist of two tracks, but over their nearly 20-minute duration you'll be taken on a powerful journey more impressive than most full-length releases releases can ever accomplish. Plus bonus appearance of Borknagar's Lars Nedland. Then it's Fractal Universe with the impassable Horizon via Metal Blade Records. The reign of saxophone continues with this French progressive metal band that I would describe as somewhere on the spectrum between Opeth and Obscura. This is the follow-up to 2019's Rhizomes of Insanity and became one of my most anticipated releases of June after hearing the excellent single A Clockwork Expectation. This track is perhaps the perfect summary of the band's sound, a highly dynamic collision of dizzyingly technical guitar riffs with delicate progressive song structures and an ever-present air of mystery. And all of this punctuated by a most righteous eruption of saxophone. Once more, this album is positively dripping, with nostalgia for albums like Blackwater Park and Ghost Reveries, but always with their own unique and modern twist on the proceedings. Likewise, if you enjoy the various projects of the aforementioned Hans Grossman, the precision musicianship on display here is going to be right up your alley. Definitely getting some alkaloid vibes, at least. In any case, this album is one I could have easily made an entire video about, but suffice it to say, it's already my favorite album of the second half of 2021 so far. Then it's another EP with Poppy and Eat. Poppy is of course a musician, performance artist, and model who has been making increasingly notable waves over the years, especially with her latest full-length album, I Disagree, in 2020. And I'm glad to say that it still maintains the same level of surprises and creativity that I've come to expect from her and her band. These are five more impressive and highly eclectic tracks, starting with Eat, a schizoid back and forth of orderly rock power chord progressions and chaotic distorted eruptions of screaming that call back to early Crystal Castles. Or as some people in my comments noted, Blood Brothers. It's a delightful mix of kind of Riot girl anthems, hip-hop, and maybe even just a dash of the Dillinger escape plan, with the latter feeling like a very real catharsis of pent-up vitriol. <laughs> 
Say Cheese is another heavy track led primarily by more vicious wails and chugging palm mutes as well as this kind of eerie clean singing that has a bit of a kitty vibe. But then out of nowhere we get this surprise smooth jazz interlude complete with piano that would be right at home on the Katamari soundtrack. And that is before we get the breakdown with her own take on a very near pig squeal that really blows my hair back every time I hear it. I live for these moments, and it's this constant element of surprise that got me hooked on Poppy to begin with. It's not just a gimmick. This is really impressive songwriting with ever-shifting performances that keep you on your toes. Then there's the further tension-building drum intro of Q building into some cool little harmonic-tinged hooks, Dark Dark World with its infectious industrial-sounding bass groove, and Breeders sounding like something we would have expected from Nine Inch Nails with teeth mixed with some 90s alternative akin to the likes of Hole and Garbage, which with just a touch of Paramore as well. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that, like it or not, Poppy is here to stay, and I, for one, could not be more thrilled to see where her career evolves in the coming years. And that's it, y'all. Those are my favorite albums of June. Of course, there were many more. You should check out my other reviews. Stick around, check out my other videos. Let me know down in the comments what were your favorite metal albums of June. Like the video if you enjoyed it, share it, all that good stuff. And of course, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. You can also chat with me and a few other metal creators on the Discord and support me on Patreon. Patreon, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.